we will use the chat option when you have yes. questions. Please do that right away. Don't hold any <laughs> questions as we go through. And uh, yeah, such a such a pleasure to see people making time and that too on a Thursday afternoon. Not <laughs> the best on, of times, really. I know you're all busy with your work. So we just hope today we are able to add some value over here. Any questions which go on to enhance the discussion, any curious questions, any questions where you feel that that uh, that that a process could be better, all of that really very well taken on board. The idea was very simple. Uh, market research, voice of customer, of course, is, isn't something which was invented yesterday. That's that's the business all of us are in, and that's why we are in business because because we listen to our customers. The idea was to find out in today's very time poor atmosphere when a respondent when a customer doesn't really have too much time to give you, but the expectations are sky high. How do we manage those expectations? How do we do more with less time from him? How do we make this a very very actionable in moment? That being the key uh, catchphrase. Survey. So I think time to launch in Tanuj. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone, again. So as it goes, the idea is to find out how we can use consumer insights very, very effectively. A very quick uh, uh, recap of the agenda. <laughs> how can we use digital media? Digital really is everywhere. Uh, we are all on digital uh, uh, modes. Uh, probably every waking moment of our of our days how do how can we use that how can voice of customer really make that as a platform for the continuous listening how do we use that to really drive a seamless journey <clears throat> and going ahead of just information collection which essentially market research is how do we solve problems immediately there could be a point i could be reaching out to tanu and say hey i want to find out how we did the last time we were in touch be the organization, you the customer. He gives me a critical feedback. If I'm taking a few days or a few weeks, as the case is, we aren't doing him a huge favor. So how do we really get that close looping in part? That's that's another one. But before that, I can't really resist talking about our organization. Tanaj mentioned a few familiar faces, but for the ones who are new, we are Neurosensum. That's the name of the organization, a cust uh, an organization which is in the business of listening to customers. <coughs> listening to them, not just by asking questions, yes, at, at, at times by asking questions, and at times by observing, uh, by, by understanding their reaction to a particular phenomena. But more case in point today is the other brand, Survey Sensum, which really is the omni-channel survey platform, which allows real-time listening and real-time analytics. So that's where we are. We've been lucky enough to work with a fair number of automotive uh, manufacturers amidst the 170 plus brands whom we work with today. Uh, Tanuj is the is a co-founder of the organization and he really is the person who's set up the entire wireframes of the survey sensing platform, which is which is the one which we are talking about today. He's been he's been fortunate enough to be working with more than 15 automotive organizations. And, and that gives him a very clear word view of how relationships, how touch points really work. And uh, about me, I have been around for close to two decades and have, have again, had a fair bit of uh, chance of working in the automotive landscape, being a part of that in the country, in India. <clears throat> and now really moving to the heart of the discussion. And that's something which which you understand better than thus I'm probably I'm probably just reiterating it when I when I say that servicing network service quality all these they come up as the top key buying factors whenever we've done a survey not now but anytime in the last 10 years there's this very clear tendency of calling them hygiene factors not a very stately term I would say for something as important as a cost of service or servicing quality what these essentially are they are make or break and they are the mother brand, marquee brand drivers. We know these so-called hygiene factors. They actually can go on to make some great stories. And unfortunately, when they are not set right in the initial few days, it, 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 it really means that sometimes even an organization has to move out of the marketplace because those, those deep-seated perceptions after the point of time, they cannot change. So the idea is very simple. Get them right 
in time and every time. <laughs> now, given how important they are, it's little surprise that these numbers are very closely monitored. They are they are monitored like the Sensex. They are <laughs> they are detailed dashboards which talk about the CSI score, SSI score, and of course, that's the way it has to be. These are things which have to be monitored like the gospel. If they go down or they come up, there is and there should be accountability. The problem begins when big metrics currencies start getting coined. Sure, that's one way of that's one way of setting a currency in place. But the very need of then making it proprietary, etc., means that it has to get into very large, detailed, definitely thought out, but large and detailed questionnaires. And that's fine, apart from the fact that no one has the time and patience for it today. That might Absolutely. sound like a very, very harsh statement to make today, but today after servicing, I would probably not give the kind of time which a typical market research survey would, would ask for. I have been guilty of being a designer of those surveys myself, but, and, and I'm saying as a baseline or probably as a one-time read, it's perfectly fine. You need to go into details. But how about that for the continuous exercise? Yeah, absolutely the right point, Rohit. So uh, when, when you talk to me about service, so I, I remembered before the sales part. So I remember when we, we go into service, we go to a service of any showroom, there, any car that we use. It takes a lot of time if we are spending there at least four to five hours to get the car delivered to us. And on top of that, someone asking us a 15 minute survey on that is something that I would not like to do. This is something that has happened to me in the past in both countries, India and Indonesia, because I've lived there and owned cars there. So it's something that we should avoid. As a consumer, we don't have that much time to spend on a service. So also, I'll uh, point out not just service. I've seen uh, SSI surveys look like this as well. Uh, so people are, uh, when designing survey, they are asking about consultants, the delivery process, whether the follow-up was done or not, or whether they would recommend a company or not. So this would take around 20 to 19 questions I have seen. Normally people use it up. But as a customer, I don't really want to answer that. I care about only a few simple things, whether my uh, demo was right, whether the car is nice, whether one person who was handling me, was supporting me, uh, was the booking experience okay. So uh, this, some kind of things I have seen in the survey which are not recommended. For example, the things that we could move out. Uh, Rohit, if you could move uh, a little bit forward. Just one second. So like questions like this, that if you have already asked that was your vehicle delivered on the day or not, you don't need to ask that how was long the delay? Did the salesperson actually uh, show you, uh, uh, deliver you the car? Of course they did. So these kind of yeah. questions can be actually avoided in the survey. So before we move no, ahead, we... Yeah. It, on your look at your now. screen yeah and yeah. and please answer if you have if you as a consumer will ever devote a 15 minute after a sales or a service survey and we'll make these results live later Interesting thank you very answers. much for everyone yeah. who's participated in okay With that, i think Moving on to the next theme, which really is about keeping it simple, keeping it very simple. Yeah. Just a minute. I'll end the poll now. Sure. And I'll share the results as well. I believe everyone can see the results. So most of the people say that the, the surveys that they want to do, 15 minutes never. <laughs> and three and five minutes are the maximum answers that people can spare for a survey. So. If this is what how you feel, the same way your customers also feel. So something to keep in mind. Okay, so I'll now move on forward. So what we can do for these kind of service, we can keep it simple, like just making it as simple as the following six to seven questions which are required if a person has purchased a car. Okay, you want to know about the NPS of their sales experience. Good question to have. But the other things that actually matter to the customer are, how was the interaction with the sales guy? The car demo was okay, the test drive. The booking and financing was smooth. 
if the waiting period was three months, was I communicated on time? Did I re, uh, get the delivery on time? These are the few questions that actually we should ask because this is what matters to the consumer. And sometimes uh, what I have seen in the survey that it is not treated as a satisfaction, but actually as a compliance measurement. In the questions, I have sometimes seen, I, I'm sure Rohit, you would have seen too, that people are asking about whether the uh, sales advisor were wearing the proper uniform. Was the corporate I couldn't machine care there? Less. I couldn't care less about that. Sure, yeah. as a hmm. as an organization, as a as a SOP, you might want to drive that hundred exactly. percent on that. Just that, just that there are different modes to be able to do that, and the customer himself doesn't care. He cares just about being satisfied. That's all. Absolutely. So I think another that... another example, Tanuj, could yeah. really hmm. the question on whether I was served tea or coffee. Now, of course, I wasn't because I went there in a great hurry, just wanting to book the vehicle. I've seen everything on digital. And I and by the way, I was there at three o'clock on a very hot afternoon. Someone <laughs> should definitely not be offering me coffee. But just imagine how it looks on a compliance platform. Exactly. Different modes to do that, yeah. And moving no, on. If, yeah, if it is required as well, we could do a mystery shopper, for example. Right, right? Sure, sure, sure. To sure. understand that. Okay, yeah. and if in case like uh, we have to get into more details, sometimes we need more details. Okay, what went wrong in the test drive? So if someone answers something like a five or a four in a question you asked about test drive on a scale of one to 10, then you can definitely ask them more things like, okay, whether they treated you properly, whether they were able to explain all the features, whether they were uh, talking to your family members as well, asking about their interest. So all those kind of things, what you want to know after the test drive is something that you can use by using simple logics in the survey that, okay, display yeah. these questions only if someone yeah. gives a negative feedback. Very so case in way. point. Yeah, go ahead. Right. So the case in point really, just go to the drill downs where they are required. And yeah. secondly, technology today follows the good old market research principles, even on a digital platform randomize. If I'm a very dissatisfied customer, I might have given a five to everything. One, of course, you have to speak to him. That's a separate matter. We'll come to the closed loop part. But for right. now, don't give him, ask him all details on all six processes, probably on one and two. And the system is intelligent enough to spot that, randomize that. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So Meanwhile, moving we on, are moving on to the next slide. Moving on. The idea That's, is not yeah, about asking more detailed questions, but essentially finding out how armed with these particular capabilities, with these particular technologies, I can do more. So a very, uh, uh, Tanuj has just shown the example of ISSI survey. And that essentially is asked to a person who buys the car. But why only speak to buyers? Why not, let's say, speak to a person who went there and minded a customer is going all the way to a showroom and then not buying. And mind it, we are talking 2022, 23, <clears throat> where McKinsey says 95% of all shoppers are digitally influenced. Where the person can look at not just the specifications, the prices, but at a car from a three-fourth, from a rear three-fourth, from a front three-fourth, all angles. Compare it seamlessly on the screen. Still, if a person is coming to you, what that means is that he's genuinely interested. Yeah. So what that really tells me that if I was interested and I did not buy, that could just mean one of these two things. A, the experience wasn't great. Or B, mm. there was an issue. When I say an issue, it doesn't necessarily need to be a quality thing. Of course, it's a relative part. Sure, the looks are great, but not as great as the car B whose showroom I also visited to. Mm -hmm. By the way, today a customer on an average just visits about 1.8 to 2 car dealerships. That's all. He doesn't visit too many. And, and that's a great occasion for him. If he's put off because of anything, I need to know that as a marketer. Not just to, not just from a satisfaction standpoint, but that's a big business driver. So what I just need to do in that case is Institute another quick survey where are anyways capturing a number and those numbers, they really stay with you. They are not shared with a third party. The system, once integrated with your process is intelligent enough or it can be sent from your end. 
the results appear on the dashboard and the links just need to be pushed out from your end. But what this essentially means is I can find out if a conversion did not happen, could I do anything better over there? Yeah. A very situational example over there. And this I'm talking of a high impact SUV launch, big, big launch. There was, and that was also seamlessly converting into high footfalls of the showrooms. Unfortunately, the conversions were not happening. A very basic data drill down done very much on the client end said that, you know what, conversions are lower in the main city dealerships. And that was again a bigger concern. <clears throat> Thankfully, there was, there were surveys installed at that particular, at that particular touch point when people were going there, when people were actually examining the cars. Through that, Fee feedback was being captured on infotainment, handling, interiors, exterior design, power. And what came out was power was much lower rated in cities, much lower. The, the, the crux of the problem, it was a very simple one. High city traffic did not allow the customer to experience power. And I could be just talking about anything, let's say from a Delhi to a Kuala Lumpur to a, to, to, to a Tokyo, any particular city over here. That's what cities are. And essentially, when I'm talking of a SUV platform, which is built on power, solutions were very simple. A particular road was, was, was mapped to a dealership, which had lesser traffic. What that meant is even if you are taking 15 minutes extra from a customer, let's do that. And let's use other visual merchandise, the sound demonstration in a, in a dealership using a big screen, one can display the speed. So very simple solutions, but the idea was just about to capture it in time. And that's what I think most insights are very simply built. And what that meant once these changes were implemented, not just to increase in CSAT scores, but also reflecting to business numbers. And when I say business, this is just one example. These touch point surveys can really be installed at multiple places. This, for example, might be a very familiar sort of screen for my colleagues from the automotive industry. It's about where is a lead emerging from. And we know every lead has a discrete conversion and a success trend. But at the same time, it also gives me an opportunity to really find out a person who has, let's say, visited, uh, who has interacted with a, with, a, with, a, with a salesperson, with a sales touch point at a mall display, or let's say on social media, what was the kind of experience? Did I get what I was looking for? Can I beef up the information over there? Can I make that particular process, sorry, that particular touch point more complete? And what that would mean is it would also start giving me a ROI on a given source. And the conversation can then move just from how much leads are being generated from a particular one. Of course, even as I say that the rules for analysis for such a thing, they need to be determined. They need to be sort of crystallized. But this can very well be evaluated from a typical classic turf lens and a multimedia approach. Yeah. So, Rohit, I would like to add something on this if you go sure. back to the previous slide. <laughs> so, what I have seen, like uh, in most of the companies, now it is changing actually, but people have been focused so much on the SSI score, for example, they forget the bigger picture. That the bigger problem is what, what you mentioned that the lead source and also you talked about the business problem that when we are using these surveys, we have to look at the bigger problem as well so that we can change a few questions if required in the middle. See, a survey so, is just a tool. A survey is absolutely. just Absolutely. Yeah, and, just to gather it's information. It's just about how I can use it more holistically. Yeah. Absolutely. So in, in this example as well, I was speaking with someone the other day. The, they were spending a lot on digital, like a website oh. uh, and SEO inquiries, Rohit. And when I asked them, okay, what is the conversion rate? It was less than 0.05% okay. on the website. And they did not know why. So something we have been talking about, okay, how can we get to the why of that? So sure. very, very simple thing where before putting on the VOC is these are the sure. numbers that we should always look at. Sure. Uh, okay. I think now a very quick poll. Uh, I'm, I'm launching it as we speak. Would you think that there is merit to... Uh, Tanuj, can you, can you please launch this one? Yeah, sure. I've, I've launched it. Do you feel there would be merit in speaking to such customers or you believe the way things have been happening till now? Of course, uh, SSI is a separate number, but yeah. additionally, do you, do you feel speaking to people whom, who let's say have not converted into sale, 
would that make any sense in your given discrete business scenario okay thank you so much there have been a fair bit of responses thank you okay so i'll end the poll meanwhile because we are we have uh, spent only 20 minutes till now i would like to know if you have any questions uh, about anything that we have discussed till now is it about have you already installed a test drive or a demo survey or is something that you are thinking about is there any ongoing problem which you are dealing with or you would want to share or ask your question about We'll be wait for like we'll wait for like ten to fifteen seconds. Wait for your questions and then we'll move on to the next slide. Please feel free to use the chat box. Okay, I think there are not many questions till now. Okay, let's move forward. Sure. Yeah, let's move forward. I am just sharing the results. 90% people believe that there is merit in speaking to showroom visitors who did make a purchase. Yeah. And I think this is changing now, Rohit. People have started yeah, to realize that, that we of need course. to know, we need to increase the conversions. We need to abort yeah. the people. So another very important thing. So we have talked about making a shorter survey, asking them where they are in, in also the non-buyers. So, but to drive efficiency, accuracy, and actionability from your VOC program, you need to use technology. And what I mean by technology, how it will help is, first, technology can help you pick the right medium. Second, it can help you go in moment. So, so when we're talking about, we are in a situation now these days where chat GPT is doing so many things, Rohit, right? But why does market research stays behind the technology? So, before I move to this, I, I had another interesting example to share. I was speaking to someone uh, two to three days later. They wanted to do VOC. They wanted to take actions on it. And we were discussing what you are doing today. So they were measuring the surveys daily, Rohit. But the analysis was done on last day of the month. That's it. Mm -hmm. So if the customer was unhappy, they would try to reach out to them 30 days later or 15 days later. So in when the technology is so good, why would we want to do that? Right? Of course. Of so course. that is the reason that we need to go in moment. Yeah. I move on now. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So the first important part in uh, using technology is choosing the right medium to share the survey on. And does that medium, is that medium scalable? Why I say scalable? Because in automotive, there are huge volumes, especially in countries like India, Indonesia, Malaysia. There are a lot of people. Huge and people volumes. Keeps going, keeps going on. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But when 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 we're choosing the right medium, can it handle that volume? Can it scale enough? Because CSI, SSI have always been an ongoing exercise. It's not like a one-time thing, right? So can your medium scale with that? The second thing is if it can scale. Is it cost effective as well, <laughs> or is it just taking the cost higher? Right. I'm sure this everything where... would resonate. Budgets are not going up very soon, <laughs> and and I'm sure there's a money always has a better use. Why actually put it mm -hmm. when when technology can 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 actually allow you to do more with less? I'll Absolutely. I'll probably put that more for less. For <laughs> yeah. That's a very interesting point. So that is something you're saying. The second thing I've, I've seen as well when you're choosing the right medium is, is it getting you the right results? Is it driving accuracy as well? Why I call accuracy? Because in some medium, I've seen, and I'm sure you might have seen as well, that it brings some kind of bias. For example, sure. uh, let's suppose I'm getting a phone call. I, I've, I've got, gotten my car service done. Three to four days later, I receive a phone call. But at that time, I'm stuck in traffic, late for the meetings, and they're asking me for a survey and also asking me to spare five minutes of my time or seven minutes of my time. Sure. Is, is that the right kind of statement in terms of mind statement that I have to give that answer? So it's something that does your medium bring this kind of bias. And it's not just from the customer side. It can be from the interviewer side as well. The interviewer might be new. Right? They don't know how to ask the questions in the right way. So 
in this not repeating the scales enough probably yeah absolutely so in the times of where whatsapp and uh, people are on social media all the time is it nearly can we pick the right medium to drive that accuracy yeah, yeah. the other thing also uh, uh, rohit which you mentioned before as well that the right medium also helps in driving action so this is an example that happened with us we also used to have uh, use telephone service so the person when the person the interview was asking a survey uh, to the customer the customer mentioned i had a very bad experience my newly serviced car is clocking a terrible fuel efficiency but how the the interviewer is, is responding that we are just ca- calling to find satisfaction letter uh, levels but i i'll surely forward this to the concern team but and the interview is not wrong the interview is yeah. perfect Good. bang on target he is doing exactly what he was trained to do he exactly can't he can't close the loop that's Absolutely. not his inefficiency that's the inefficiency of the process which he's or the process of the system the way we are using cuz <laughs> the customer also doesn't know will there will be a follow up right yeah. or will it be time to make a real difference or the example i was sharing rohit where it is the results are looked on 31st of the month whether yeah. customer will have to wait till that time to make yeah. something happen wait wait so most commonly used system which we have yeah. seen is the telephone reach out right but it has its own headaches so we were talking about efficiency but uh, can we with the telephone can we scale enough scale enough like uh, if the if we have the service 10000 people or 15000 people or it's increasing for coming for service every month can we have phone callers doing these phone calls all the time the second problem that i've seen uh, is every contact center has the maximum churn rate right the attrition is highest in the contact centers so when we are changing free telecallers frequently how would you make sure that the quality is not impacted right the other problems i've seen i was i was talking about when i received that call stuck in traffic right and then i'm getting repeat calls from callers that please fill the survey because i have a response rate uh, metric to chase right but that is just driving irritation amongst the customers nothing else the other part i've seen is um, that sometimes people receive so many calls that they start calling the actual contact center of the company in the headquarters and complaining that why are we receiving so many calls we don't need it right also one other problem that i've seen with the is with the telephony especially in countries like india where there are so many regional languages but you have a contact center in delhi yeah. how would you get people to speak tamil yes. all the time and that too fluently right so these are the few things that the uh, yeah. telephony has some problem that is why we talk about choosing the right medium yeah and then some things that go on with the telephone that's a problem itself is huge cost sure. slow analytics and sometimes yeah. you have to pick lower sample because of the huge cost thing so yes. few things about catty or telephone would you like to add anything to it roy no, i think it's covered thank you okay so another point of uh, uh, choosing effective voc in driving effective voc the first is the medium the second is measuring the survey in moment for example if we map the customer journey of an automotive sector everyone will know this there is a pre sales or a test drive journey when the person visits the showroom then there is a sales service visit workshop or uh, people who did not come after service right so are we measuring these surveys in the moment like pre sale survey sent right after the test ride to know whether they'll buy or not right sure. sale survey were they happy with the delivery service and then also so we should also service lapsers because for automotives when a person after purchasing the car comes to the service center that's also a point of making business right so if the people that's that's thought, a, that's that's the biggest uh, business driver problem. exactly yes. so so we have to make sure that we are asking the lapsers as well who have not come in the last one year mm. what is the reason mm. they are not coming for the service have they sold the car or is it like they have started going somewhere else because they were not happy with the situation so these are the kind of things we should yeah go ahead roy yeah and 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 these are really these are really today possibilities offered by technology and on top of that definitely there is a human brain 
of course i think the, i'll i'll just marry the two things tamil said together mm-hmm. <laughs> one is about in moment which which is which technology allows the second is removing that bias once again on pre sales if i ask a person just on the day of course whatsapp can allow me the omni channel platform can allow me to get to him in 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 5 minutes from when he's made the purchase but is yep. that the right time mm. or is that a time when the person is in so much of a exhilaration that he'll forget that a that that a sales person had given me a long commitment three times taken three hours for the entire processing to be done he'll probably just give a 10 out of 10 on everything but that long term dissatisfaction would keep festering so probably we'll give it a some cool off period some four days five days a week for that initial initial exhilaration to wear off before we say of course technology without a human brain which understands biases is is it yeah <laughs> i mean similar for a workshop visit if i have just taken a, a delivery of a car and that 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 very shining just just waxed car of course i'll give a huge rating but i need to start driving it drive it around <laughs> for a week to say are the are all glitches solved have any new glitches not appeared so i think that that really is the time when and that's why probably as we said the survey should be sent out after about 5 or 7 days after yeah. he's he's had a chance to interact with that the other you- other part the, the, how how we can like use technology to set this up is one thing is very important right now this is something very few i have seen in across asia that the systems that we are using are pretty manual these days so if they are manual in the sense that okay you are getting the data from the dealership and then you are uploading into the system and sending the survey it is okay but now it's time to move on to the next things like can you find a system which is compatible with your internal crm dealer <laughs> management system or crms like salesforce hubspot which are commonly used these days yeah. so that anything happens in your dealer management system or a crm can trigger a specific survey at a specific time person comes for a test drive dealer sets in the salesforce that okay this person has taken the test drive a survey goes immediately to the person right if the person buys a car it gets ma- uh, uploaded in their dealer management system by the dealer then 3 days later a survey gets sent that okay how was your experience of the car so making it effective in a say automated rule way rule driven trigger rule driven is something that we should look for now coming in the future to go deeply in moment and drive actions the other and, and thing these are technologies of today by the way these are yeah, exactly which which a lot of which a lot of functions are, are are using to a great extent that's how workflows are being automated now and it's time market research takes this quantum leap of course a lot of this is happening i'll be yes. the first one to say a lot of this is happening not at all a pessimist by heart and things <laughs> do, do take time do take a, a, a fair bit of time but i think there's a fair bit of traction and 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 these really are things we should be talking a lot more about exactly and also the medium like we were talking about in terms of technology if i talk about india i talk about indonesia malaysia these three places and in philippines i've seen viber does the same thing yeah. you have to pick the right medium to send a survey to send yeah. it on whatsapp we have seen the response rate from 12 to 20% that's the minimum we have seen and sure. it's much much better than the phone one the traditional yeah. phone run right so then people can respond to them on time right you don't need to and you if you have to remind you just send one reminder that to over whatsapp you don't need to call the person so it's yeah. something that we have seen people moving towards and it's getting better and one other very very useful thing of technology is because the surveys are captured in moment <laughs> as soon as something negative comes up dealer gets a ticket right away that okay this person is unhappy because of what happened here please call them up and fix the problem and the technology should also be able to do if in case the dealer is not handling that problem it can escalate it to after a proper sla of like 2 days 3 days to a headquarters that they can actually make that decision if dealer is not able to correct once again a rule guided thing hmm. to begin when one can one can start this on certain processes see how it goes these things cannot be a quick solution implemented over the night it's a slow journey but it's important that the journey begins yeah yeah so i i had a question as well uh, to the audience i wanted to know if if they can answer so have you integrated 
your CRM with your survey system yet? Just a quick question, if anyone wants to answer. I put that on the chat and I hope you are able to see the chat as well. No, so Carmen says no. And there's a yes. Milan says yes. So few people have, few people yes. have not. Most yes. of them have not, Rohit. Yes, yes. This is, this is, yeah, that's right. These, these are technologies which are where the time is now. Yes. Absolutely. I think let's move on. Yes. Thank you for replying, Nikhil, Amirul, <laughs> Carmen, and Milan. The other interesting part now, uh, Rohit, if in terms of using technologies, not that was about go in moment, right? Getting everything right there. Oh, now, sure. how about the mm -hmm. reporting? Now the reporting in moment needs again. To be, exactly. The reporting needs to be real time as well, and it needs to reach the dealer as well in real time. Yes. No yes. more 30 days reporting. Yeah. So by geographies, by uh, time series, by dealerships, and also by touch points. The technology should be good enough to capture everything in a single dashboard where yeah. your headquarter can see and dealer can see only their own data. But yeah. that is how they can actually start driving actions and close the loop. Tanuj, we'll take it up a notch now in terms of pace. Don't have too much time. That's so okay. yes, I think we spoke about the Sensex part earlier. <laughs> and yes, Sensex is something we all monitor. But but a short punt, a quick punt doesn't help anyone. Definitely not a long-term investor. And that's why this very quick view of what should not be done. Things like eight and below is poor. Nine is average. Ten is very good. Is somewhere really trying to get into someone's mind, into someone's psyche to say, hey, this is the answer you should be giving. And that's something not fair to that. anyone. Not to the customer, not to the measurer. I'm sure this can drive a lot of things. It can drive in moment incentivization probably, but it definitely cannot sort of help enable a long term journey of improvement, of continuous improvement. Yeah. And the other thing that uh, which when we see uh, the right one, I got a pen paper form the other day. Uh, this is me, uh, and I, I gave a lower rating uh, to something that they mentioned. It I, I think it was about time. So yeah. they, because they were sitting in front of me, we, you were talking about the medium as well again. So they were sitting in front of me. They pushed me to give a better rating and also give a signature there. Right? <laughs> that, so, okay, so, so you are the culprit. You are the culprit. <laughs> you got really into it. So, but having said that, yeah. what medium going forward would you like to use for ongoing CSI, SSI surveys? And I'm launching this just as we speak. Thank you very much. I'm sure. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. Overwhelmingly WhatsApp till now from whatever I see. Yes. Okay. SMS completely agree when reaching a, when reaching a certain subset and that's why the Omni channel play is so powerful. It can also tell you exactly this is where this cohort is where whatsapp may not work and as sms really is a is a is a quick fix to it and yes telephonic just about four percent and that's and that's a fair bit of sample i'm talking about yeah share share these results Roy. after ending I'm the poll that. yeah I'm so very interesting part see Roy, i have seen that sometimes people who we work with the cx guys they yeah. actually want to use these technologies like WhatsApp and SMS, but sometimes they're still stuck because of the long going. No, there are, there are, are, there are, there are legacies yeah. and legacies, legacies are positive, legacies are negative. So I think that's, that's how big systems, big processes are. It takes time. Yeah. I think all we can do is be a partner to them being always available <laughs> and let's exactly. move on. Yeah. So any, any questions, anyone till now? Before we move forward to closing the loop, the final part of the PPT. Man. No, we don't have any questions. Okay. Not on the side. Yeah. Okay. So I'll stop sharing and I'll move on to the. Okay. So now we have set up the survey correctly. It's smaller. We have set up the technology. It's in moment. Now, 
now the most important part is if you have the results live with you, how you use them properly to take the right actions, which we call closing the feedback loop. So there are two kind of loops, as you can see in the picture. One is called an inner loop. Inner loop is like something bad happened to the customer, an individual or a service or dealer calls them, fixes their problem, and the customer is happy and the loop is closed. The other kind of loop is when person uh, has a problem, like they, they were waiting for a long time, everyone in the feedback is complaining about there has been a long time queuing when we are going to take the service. That is something that a simple person, a single individual or single dealer cannot solve quickly. It might need help from organization to put processes in place where the queue management can be done quicker. So that Anuj, your voice is not audible. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Please carry on. Okay. Yeah. So, so something to be thinking about. So let's move on uh, to the next slide of inner loop, like how we can make inner loop successful. So, so what few examples that you would see here? Yeah, I'm sure you would have heard this as well. This is something that I picked from Google reviews uh, where people are talking about bad service quality and they're mentioning that, okay, they went for repair, something happened with the car and they paid the full amount, but problem still was there. And within the 10, 11 days, nobody called them or nobody reached out to them to fix the problem. And because of that, they had to push something on the social media. Now, as a consumer, whenever I go to any uh, dealership, I look at their reviews on Google and Rohit, this is not something I would want to see, right? That someone is right. Uh, all the reviews about that dealership are poor ones on social media. Yes. So to avoid this problem, the thing is when you're doing the in-moment survey and someone gives a negative feedback, let the dealer know instantly so that the customer does not have to wait 11 days and give such a poor comment on social media dealer reaches out fixes the problem this never happens customer feels that okay my feedback gets listened and they work on it. this is what closing the loop inner loop is all about and what i've also seen like it's a, we read a study an article from accenture where they have done a research and it says 60 to 65 percent customers accept online virtual and real-time response experience from their automotive OEM. It's not something they would want to wait one and a half months to get a response back. You will lose that customer. So essentially, this is not this is not a, an item for the future. This is an item for here and now. It's yep. something whose time has come. And, and and really, it's now about a customer saying, hey, this is what I expect as clearly as, as, as they could, yeah. Absolutely. So, and how we can make inner loop effectively is something that we can talk about now. Uh, so inner loop has to be in real time. So to act, to make an impact to the customer and also get their sol uh, solution fixed. The process that you can set, just an example, is within 20 to 48 hours of SLA, you can put a process that the dealer has to respond to a negative feedback, which is absolutely related to them. That is the first way of making closed loop effective. Second is respond to the customer with the promise of if there is a negative response, that this is the timeline it will take to fix the issue. And if it is a bigger issue, like a queuing problem, a time delay, let them know, okay, we are going to work on it, but this is something I cannot solve right away. It might take some time for me to do that. Something that we should do for inner closed loop. Rohit, can you move a little bit forward? Oh, just allow me a second. Sure. This is, yeah, yes. Okay. And the other important part is that the dealer partner should always have a view about it. That, okay, how many tickets came in a month? What yeah. we have done with them? Is there something pending? Because just getting them a notification, no one knows, uh, Rohit, that whether that something was done on it, right? right? So using a proper kind of like a ticketing tool, then again, the technology comes in that whenever something right. negative comes up, there should be a tool which raises a ticket. Dealers can see it the HQ can see it, right? I think very fair to say, because, mm. because again, 
all of us have 10 things on our on our list i'm sure the diesel is the, the dealer is chasing profitability a lot more he's ch- <laughs> he's probably chasing logistics he's chasing indent of certain parts and he's chasing quite a few of his personal even as we speak we know yeah. we know there are quite a few other business challenges whatever we can do to aid him and that's i think yes on the next one just uh, in a second yeah so this that's is just it. an example yeah go ahead go ahead please, please, please. yeah so this is just an example where uh, a ticketing system like this can be a part of your real time analysis dashboard you will find platforms which can do surveys and also do this we can do that too but others are there as well so opening a ticket as soon as a negative feedback comes in and getting it assigned to the dealership is something that is here and for now so that when they do not when they do not remember calling a person they can just look at this dashboard they see oh i have four tickets pending they can reach out to them solve the problem with the customer make them happier so that they come back to that dealership again and then another part is that sometimes the we we can solve problems like this okay someone comes to the car showroom they get their car serviced they told about a door handle problem it was not fixed but we did the inner loop we called the customer again we fixed it that is simple it can be done by a single dealership there's no organization involved but there are some times when you'll see people responding in the feedback that the behavior of the staff was very rude the sales agents are not trained they don't know much about the car there is always a delay in the delivery of car after the service problems like this is not something that an individual can quickly resolve that is where the organization as a whole needs to involve to set up processes or to give new technology or give new training to the team and this version is called outer loop so uh, for example we we did this is uh, will not reveal the brand name but this is something that we did so our observations from so uh, we were working with a with a car manufacturer again so what what our observations from the after sale survey was that everyone mentioned that the service gets delayed we get the car delivered later after the service most of the people when they got to know what is the reason it was that the parts were not available on time the 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 manufacturer of the car was coming from europe it was not an indian manufacturer so the parts availability was a problem when we went into the data drill down we observed that this problem is coming and the nps also low was coming from specific dealership across cities very simple breakdown then in deeper understanding on that what we when we talked to the customers and also we talked to the dealership as well it was there was a voice of the dealer involved as well here roy and we talked about what is happening why people are complaining again and again about the parts availability and they mentioned that in our part of the city the roads are so bad that the person has to come back again and again a very very simple thing but how the hq was supplying all the parts were equal rather than handling to the demand where the more demand is so that the, so this is what was fixed after getting to the voice of the customer and voice of the dealer that the uh, parts were sent to the people who required more who had more demand and when we changed that i think within 4 to 5 months we saw an immediate change in the customer satisfaction score and this yes. increased like this because that was the major reason of the problem so this is what is outer loop all about where the problem is much more deeper you have to do more drill down might take 2 3 months to fix it but that's how a solution can come anything to add rohit i think yeah i think this one like the like the like the early example which we take it on the on the on the on the high, on the high end suv where where yeah, the power the in the main city was coming as a problem i think if you look at this one as also the other one these are pretty simple examples yeah and and not to say that within a point of time given some more time the dealership or the organization would have anyways would have anyways realized that yeah. what that time is is anyone's guess it could be 2 months 3 months 6 months really depends on how lean 
the 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 observation mechanism was the the the, the idea really is in those 2 3 6 months huge so in time alerts before it would so it's it's like a signal which pops up before time and helps you precede the solution before any significant damage has been done i think that really is the crux and any like any other measurement system these have to be early warning signals i think if that is done because everything which we say the actionable thought provoking questions the real time uh the real time question landing to someone a real time alert coming the dashboard being a constant reminder that this is something you can fix all of this is really geared to getting in in time solutions in time alerts i think if that is done then then i think tanu janmi we've probably done our job yeah i i love that point and uh, what what i see I, what rohit one other thing i have observed now people have actually started thinking about all this yeah that's the good part like some of the people also mentioned that they have started using technology they have started using whatsapp as well as a channel right so people i think are moving in the right direction it's just the moving away slowly and slowly from the legacy things yeah completely completely and then and then coming on to this i think that's that's what we wanted to share today rohit uh, i think that and and something more for the respondents to really give us their opinion <laughs> yeah so it's essentially about your current satisfaction measurement system and you know what <laughs> close looping uh, was present even before even before such digital systems come in came in i have i have been old enough to be around for some time and even in a telephonic sense of course not at a real time but at certain events we would a good researcher a good measurement system would always say hey you know what after every 5 days every week every 10 days give me a list of dissatisfied customers of course the sheer time and efficiency are two things so not going into technology uh, uh, as we talk right now but does your current satisfaction measurement system allow you to really do that so are you able to actually close the loop oh yes yes in some fair cases bit of funds, yeah <laughs> yeah so i think i think i think a lot of what i was talking about was in some cases before be, because let's say even if in a very leanly driven telephonic system mm. when i'm taking out let's say the, the data every week certain ones would not be solved certain would of course they would take a fair time of a person reading them collating them disseminating them because it's not just about arriving at it it also needs to be disseminated to each and every dealership so yeah so it's a, it's a, it's a great one i think what 60% people are saying at least in some cases this is being done so 20% saying completely 40% saying in some cases i am just sharing the results as we speak yeah yeah and 40% people saying no it's a separate area from now yeah So, so great. So that's something whose time is that's forty percent where where the time has come. Absolutely, and I I'm love to hear that at least twenty percent people have started doing this, and I'm sure they are seeing good results as well, and they are able to drive actionability. And we, and we stay in business, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so one thing for uh, for that part, just last thing before we end this uh, conversation, we would like to ask you, just uh, if nothing nothing for a salesy thing or anything. we would like to ask you would you want us to talk to us me and rohit together and just setting up your process up and going through a small demo in which how these all things can be automated and so that you can drive actionability better so we just would just want to call yeah if anyone says a yes we would just give them a call me and rohit are not kind of a sales people so the call will be just about talking to you nothing else we will keep this for another 15 seconds and that's yeah. it <clears throat> and meanwhile if anyone has any questions any confusions from the powerpoint that you would like to us to answer that we are all ears Okay so we'll end the poll for now Thank you so much for this
And thank you so much again, as I said, for taking out time on a Thursday afternoon. Isn't the simplest one? And, <laughs> and, I, and I really, really believe uh, that 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 would be a grave injustice if we haven't done uh, done that done something good in this time. So feel free to drop a note if you think it's added some value, or or if we could make it better the next time around. I think that's yeah. that's that's of utmost importance for us. Thank and you very much. One very important thing. Uh, like we survey our uh, car customers, once you close this Zoom window, you'll get a small feedback, two questions only, <laughs> that how did the webinar go? Please make sure you let us know and if there is any other topic that you would like to discuss the next time, because we'll prepare that and we'll do that topic for you. So thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Nikhil. Uh, nice hearing these words from you. Thank you, Ruji. Thank you, Pasugiano, all the people that I know. Thank you, Amirul. Thank uh, you, Amirji. So day. good to see you here. Keep in Thank touch. You. Thanks a lot. Bye, Nikhil. See you. Thank you, Ivan. Michelle. Same. Have a good day, guys. We'll just end it for now. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you, Tanuj. See you soon. See you. <laughs>